Pin washing or panel lining is a great way to get contrast and definition into different areas of our models by using low surface tension and a capillary action. On this base, I've deliberately created a very high surface tension by giving the whole thing a coat of ultra matte varnish. And I'm also going to use a thin water-based product to do the wash with, in this case, Agrax Earthshade. Water has a relatively high surface tension. You can see that when we try to apply this to the model, the paint stays exactly where we put it. So if we want to fill in the details, we have to trace the entire way along them. And if any of the liquid touches either side of the crack we're trying to paint, it stays there and it stains the surface. To try and fill in all the details using this product on this particular surface, it's going to be really time consuming and pretty difficult. There's also the fact that if we do get paint on an area we don't want it to be, that when the product is dry, we aren't able to remove it without damaging the paintwork underneath. In this example, I've given the base a couple of coats of Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish. The gloss surface has immediately reduced a lot of the surface tension, and I'm gonna use contrast paint to do this with, which although is a water-based paint, does have some additives in which makes it easier to pin wash with. To start with, we'll thin the contrast paint down a little with the medium. This should make it easier to work with. And we can test that consistency against the side of the dish. When we come to apply it to the model, we'll take off any of the excess paint and we're still trying to be accurate and aiming for all those details that we want to make darker. But you can see already just by lightly touching against the recesses, the wash itself is beginning to move along them. You'll sometimes hear this called a recess wash. Although easier to use than the Agrax Earthshade, you'll notice we're still getting some paint onto areas of the model that we don't want it. However, because we have a gloss surface and because we're using this different product, we have a big advantage. Whilst the paint is still wet, we can take a Q-tip and remove any of that excess. The next product we're going to use is called an enamel wash. In this case, a panel liner for brown and green camouflage by AK Interactive. And again, I've put a thick gloss coat over the base to help remove any of that surface tension. The enamel wash has a solvent base, so we need to thin it with a solvent thinner rather than water. This has a much lower surface tension than water so it should make the process even easier. I take two dishes and put a small amount of thinner in each one. One is to clean my brush with, just like you'd use water for with normal paint, and the other is to thin the enamel wash further. It's important you give the enamel wash a really good shake and then give it maybe 30 seconds to settle before using it. And I'll decant a little bit of the wash into the dish that's already got some of that sansed or thinner in. And here on the side, I can just check that consistency again. So we take the base, load our brush with the wash, touch off any excess, and begin to carefully paint in the details. And you can see, just like the contrast was better than the Agrax Earthshade, the enamel wash is flooding into those details even better than the contrast paint was. I barely have to touch the brush to the detail and you can see the wash being drawn into that recess. The third type of product that we can use for pin washing is oil paint. And here we're gonna make a wash using Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Color Van Dyke Brown. Just like with the enamel, I get two dishes, put some solvent thinner in one and put some solvent thinner in the other. One to clean my brush with and one to create the wash with. Because the oil paint is a lot thicker than the enamel wash, I'll need a lot more thinner to create it. And all we do is take a small blob of the oil paint and thoroughly mix it in with the solvent until we get a wash consistency. Again, we can just check it against the side of the dish. And exactly like we've done before, we take our glossy base, load the wash onto our brush, touch off any excess and then carefully apply it to the details. And you can see just how easily this wash 
is running in to all of those recesses. I could have made the enamel wash run in just as easily had I thinned it further. If the wash is really thin, like it is here, I might need to apply a couple of coats of it. Just like with contrast, or with our enamel paints, if we get anywhere we don't want it, we can get a dry Q-tip and just wipe off that excess whilst the paint's still wet. One of the big advantages though, of oil and enamel paints in particular, is when they've dried out, if we find there's an area where we have paint and we didn't want it there, we can still clean it off. All we need to do is put a tiny bit of the thinner that we used on our Q-tip and then gently wipe away at the surface. Take your time with this and be gentle because if you work too hard in the area, you can rub through the gloss varnish and damage the paintwork beneath it. This is nothing to do with the chemical itself, it's just abrasion. We can take advantage of this property of the paint and create a really weathered looking model. Perhaps this is something we'll look at in a future video. So here we have three different bases using three different products, but all to perform the same technique. We use this technique on nearly every model we paint, and depending on the effect we want, will determine which of the products we use. If you've enjoyed the video, then hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this from us, then make sure you press subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.